Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Whether it's my primary school, pizza lunch, my Friday night youth group, my weekly young adult catch up, I could always go for at least one more slice of pizza. As a young fella, there were so many places I went to fill my hunger for more. Most places I found left me feeling emptier than ever. You want a surprise pizza? Amy. Hey. That's that is a lot of pizza. But it was there at youth group with some ordinary people who weren't much older than me, who shared a laugh with me, shared a pizza with me, and shared their faith with me. If thank you was the only prayer you ever made, yeah. it would be enough. Cool. Thank you, Lord, for our bodies, eh? Yeah. That's so cool. So you know what? That's what we're going to do. We ain't theologians. We ain't apologists. We're just a couple of mates. Hanging out on a couch, yeah, you got it. <laughs> eating some pizza and talking about what God is doing in our lives. G'day and welcome back to another slice of pizza. I'm super keen for today's episode. We're here to talk about how we can keep our temples of the Holy Spirit in tip-top condition. And I'm joined by some really good friends, Father Josh and Matt. How are you going? Thanks for having us. Great, Zach. Yeah, it's good going to have good. you here. Thanks, Matt. Thanks again, Father Josh. Um, man, keen to talk about how I can keep my body in tip-top shape. Also keen to maybe enjoy a pizza. Maybe it's a little bit healthier than usual. Um, I don't know. What are you after? Well, I noticed you've brought three plates here. So we, it sounds like we're going to share some pizza. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Zach, mate, I think you've you've had one too many slices of pizza, man. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but before I became a priest, I used to be a personal trainer. Is that right? And I didn't let any of my clients <laughs> eat pizza if they wanted to lose weight. So <laughs> while we have got three plates here today, we're not going to be eating pizza today. We're going we're to be shredding the pizza. So let's get ready to work out. That was awesome. Thanks, Father Josh. I needed that. Yeah. Father, yeah. you've hardly broken a sweat. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't eat pizza every day. <laughs> How often do you, would you yeah. say you work out, Father Josh? Oh, look, I'm running at the moment six days a week. Sugar. Thank you. Like, how many Ks would you do in a day? Well, last couple of weeks I've been doing about 100 Ks a week, so it's different oh, amounts each day. Each day. <sighs> but uh, uh, my long run's about 35 Ks on a Saturday morning. Wow, As you yep. do. Yeah, I, 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 there's nothing better I like to do on my Saturday morning than running for that far. <laughs> um, do you, like, how do you prepare for a run like that? Do you carb load? Look, I've done a bit of uh, testing and adjusting. Yeah. And I've worked out that to run, you know, marathon sort of distance, mm. I don't really need to carb load. I've just got to eat healthily the day before with good quality carbohydrates. Not a lot of carbohydrates, yeah. but maybe some brown rice or some Low GI sweet stuff. Pota- yeah. Yeah, cool. The stuff that'll burn for longer. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And then when you go before you run, like on the day, like if you're about to run a marathon, would you have it something for breakfast or not? Oh, yeah. That's yeah? All, all stuff that's easier to digest. So cool. either a couple of bananas yep. or uh, a bananas. plate of oats. Oh, I love oats. Well, um, thanks for, for putting us through the motions. which I really appreciate it. That was fun. And I'll have to go for a run sometime. I like a bit of running myself. Mm. Been running a few Ks to burn off some of the pizza, but nothing like that. So really appreciate it. And so you were a personal trainer before you came in priest. How long were you a personal trainer for? I did PTing for about three years. I worked at Fitness First gyms, yeah, and uh, it was it was amazing because I was involved really closely in the lives of people. That's what I loved most about it: making a difference 
and other people's lives. Yeah, mm. and you've continued to obviously keep that fitness regime over your time in the seminary and even as your time as a priest. Like how important is staying fit to you personally, but how, how important do you think it is for us as, as Christians and as Catholics? Well, it's a fundamental part of my day, just like prayers are, yeah. prayers are an important part of my day. I start each day off with some sort of movement. So whether that's simply going for a walk, a recovery walk to get the, get the blood flowing in the muscles and praying, using that time proactively to pray, or even if I'm going for a run, you know, use that time to pray as well. Uh, yeah. I think we can think of, get, get cornered into thinking of prayer as this sort of yeah, motion, totally. but yeah. guilty. I feel like I'm glorifying God when I move my body and that's, yeah. that's prayer in and of itself. I think you're right. Like I definitely feel there is a spiritual aspect to it if you're willing to, to put it in. And, and I think um, even St. Paul speaks about us training our bodies. Like he's like, I do not beat, box the air, I do not beat my breast um, for nothing. Like I'm training my body and disciplining my body so that I can bring glory to God. Like mm. do you think that it is important for us to train our bodies for our spiritual life? And how do you see that playing out? Everything's connected. Yeah. We're not a body and a soul s- separately. We're a body and a soul together. Yeah. And so there's got to be a connection between your spiritual life and how you how you employ your physical body. Is there a particular time when you've like felt those two things combine, like a, a moment where you've like actually experienced that? Absolutely. Every now and then uh, when my legs have recovered enough to do a really f- a faster run, mm. I just feel like I'm running on air. Right. And it's just everything comes together and you, you, you feel unstoppable. Mm. And it's in, during those times where I really feel like, you know, God's gifted me with this ability to have this experience. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Yeah, I just, I think I'm so used to prayer being like, I sit down and like, I quiet myself. Like I, there's a, an aspect of the body, but it's like, you know, I'm being trying to like relax and be like still and like kind of listen in, but like. I don't usually think of prayer as me like, <laughs> like you know, ugly, <laughs> ugly and sweating and yeah. like you know, it's it is kind of drilled into. God me. loves you, however you are at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like how do you? What is what goes through your mind though? Like when you're exercising to make that prayer. Well, I'm not. I'm not making complicated prayers of petition. Usually it's just thank you, Lord, for this yeah. opportunity to glorify you. Thank you for uh, the health that I have, the fitness that I have. And uh, I think it was St. Louis de Montfort said, if thank you was the only prayer you ever made, yeah. it would be enough. Cool. Well, thank you, Lord, for our bodies, eh? Hey? Yeah, amen. That's so cool. Um, um, I think for me, I remember a time, oh, this is, this is a little bit embarrassing, but... And it's a little bit corny, but Go whatever. <laughs> um, when, I, when I was serving on a team in Sydney, I'd just um, been to a discernment retreat. Um, and it, I, it was with the missionaries of God's love. And I was, I was a little bit worried about them just like preaching the, the priesthood at me. And I was like, oh, goodness me. But um, I was really surprised like when because I, I was dating a girl at the time. And I was pretty sure that, you know, we were moving towards marriage even back then. Um, have actually married her. But um, I was just like, yeah, I'm not sure about this retreat. But I went along and it was just awesome. Like the, the things they, and the tips they gave me for discernment in general were just awesome. And one of the things was whatever you feel called to, do something about it tomorrow. And I was like, okay, what can I do about that? And I was thinking about it. I was like, at the time, like my, my wife's beautiful. Like she's fantastic. And I was like, well, I'm a white, lethargic, slightly overweight male. And I'm like, maybe I can do something about that and give myself as a, as a gift to her. And so I decided I was going to start running. And I was like, right, I can probably run about maybe two kilometers. So I was like, I'm going to try and hit five kilometers um, and then see where I go from there. And yeah, I actually did that. I was able to slowly make my way to five. Well done. The next year, I ended up running 10 kilometers, which I was like, man, that's awesome. I think I've run like 13 is like my longest or something. Um, and then, yeah, on my wedding day, like I was actually really like, and it sounds, it might be like really superficial, but I was, I was really comfortable in who I was. And I felt like I was able to give myself as a somewhat of a, a, a better gift than what it was back then, you know, and um, I think that was a really cool experience for me. It sounds like it's a gift that you've been given from the Holy Spirit, the desire to to be a better person. Yeah, actually, and I, I was very Holy Spirit, because you reminded me of this. On the day that I was going for my first run the next day after that retreat, 
I opened up um, my de- my Christian prayer book, like, and um, the psalm that I opened up to was, "Behold, the bridegroom, go out and meet him." Oh wow! Ooh. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. <laughs> so I was like, "Man, look at me going out, like starting <laughs> to prepare for, to to be the bridegroom." That's and I, I read that scripture, and oh, it was really cool. Nice. So, yeah, Zach, when you were like sharing about how you you really felt called to to give yourself as a gift, that kind of just got me thinking, like, you know, like our bodies, they like they are a gift, and like everything we have is. Like everything that's good is like a gift from God and like it's... Yeah, and the scriptures say like our body is not our own. You're bought at a price. Yeah, yeah there you go. And, you know, we we have like a duty, I feel, to take care of our bodies and like be good stewards of that gift that God has given us. Mm. So like, yeah, I think that's that's something like I don't really focus on a lot when I think about prayer and like when I think about the spiritual life because, you know, it's called it's called the spiritual life. Like yeah. it's not... You know, think body, but like that's a way you can be more disciplined, and that's a way, mm. like, like you were saying, Father, like it's so important to recognize that you know we body are spirit, and, soul. and yeah, body and spirit, and like the two things are like united and one and attached, and like you can't have one without the other. Almost, yeah. is that yeah, some yeah. deep philosophy there, Matt. What Whoa, are you, mate? mate, I'm you know <laughs> 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 not saying anything heretical. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, I guess that's a good point. Let's talk about gluttony. Like, what is mm. gluttony? Father, forgive me for I've sinned because I've <laughs> had too much pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Look, too much of anything can be a bad thing. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, we're, we're, the Holy Spirit gives us the gift of prudence uh, and, and self-control. And so those, those counter gluttony, those counter this... This desire that we have inside of us just to keep eating or to keep drinking or I don't know where it comes from, but, you know, I like potato chips. Really? Especially. <laughs> Is that your guilty pleasure? <laughs> like washing <and> chops? <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially honey and soy chips. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, potato yeah. chips. Too good. And I actually set myself a goal. I wrote some goals out at the start yeah. of this year. No chips, no sugar. How's that going? How's that going? Oh, not well. <laughs> <laughs> not well. You it's heard hard. it here first. It's hard because, you know, inadvertently as a priest, I get invited to parishioners' places oh, for, uh, yeah. for meals. Have some chips, Father. And it's not just the chips, but it's, you know, they, 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 I love it. I love going to people's places for dinner. But they put on the starters yep. and the main <laughs> and the dessert, and you've got to eat it all. Yeah. Yeah. You're compelled to eat it all, and so how do you do that? How do you balance that the 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 pressure to partake of everything that is being on offered without you know overdoing it, yeah. mm. without eating too many chips? And it's quite a tough balance, but I feel like in those occasions, you know, it would be rude to decline. Yeah. Uh, I think. For me anyway, I know that I can feel gluttonous when I know that I'm feeling an empty void with something that isn't of God and it's maybe a little bit excess. Um, whereas that, you're sort of, you are receiving what is on around you. You know, you're not trying to fill yeah. a void. You're like just in, in the celebration. Well, I think you've touched on something really important there, Zach, in that... Sometimes the things that we do that we don't want to do are actually effects mm. of something else missing in our maybe our spiritual life. Yeah, cool. So we've spoken a little bit about body image. I've shared a little bit about my journey, and I feel like in our experience in the world and what we see in the media, um, body image has quite a negative perception. You know, you've got to look a particular way, and I feel like we've spoken about the fact that we do need to care for our body, but we don't want to fall into the trap of, I guess, idolizing our body or like beating ourselves up because we don't look a particular way. Um, what are some tips you give us in finding the balance between treating our body well and looking after the temple that we have um, versus, uh, you know, idolizing our body? Mm. Well, I think, first of all, you've got the, the, the language is right, finding the balance. Yeah. And so one of the things which, which can tip the balance in the wrong direction is when we view images which don't do us any good. Yeah. Uh, looking at magazines that have... Uh, you know, models that, like, yeah. yeah, photoshopped models and things like that. Unrealistic expectations. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good word, unrealistic expectations. And so uh, being prudent about what we view. Yeah. It's hard though, it's everywhere. Like it's it is. in movies, in, yeah. you can't escape it. Like it's. It is, but at some point or the, down the line, we've got to actually make a decision yeah. about what goes into these 
Mm. But the eyes are the, t- the windows to the soul. Yeah. And so... And you can reduce the amount of it. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like I know that like some social media platforms, like it shows you people you're not even following and you're like, you're just surrounded by all these people that you don't know who they are. You don't know what their life looks like. You could have just seen them on a very, very good day. Um, and it's just like, again, unrealistic body. It's easy to like, I know I do this sometimes. Like I tell myself, yep, I'm doing this because like I want to be disciplined. I'm doing this because I want to like, you know, look after my body. But I feel like there is an element of like, I just want to Vanity, yeah. I just want to look good in the mirror, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. I think there is that. So it's like, how do I, what like, what do I need to, how do I need to orient my heart? And like, what do I need to tell myself like the reason I'm doing this so I can be like, yeah, pure in my intentions in that way. Or should you even feel bad about or having I, that intention? Should I feel like, bad about that? Yeah, like it's, because I feel like we all do it, you know? Like it's it's something that like looms. I mean, maybe you don't, Father. <laughs> maybe you're just I'm human, man. above that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not above that. And I think at the end of the day, if we can look in front of them, look in the mirror and be with, be happy with what we see. If we can stand before God and uh, bring our intentions before God and know that God would be happy with our intentions, then we're on the right track, I think. Um, has there been a time in your life where you've like just been wrestling through life and you haven't wanted to look after the, your, your body? Like, how did you wrestle through that? How did you come out of it? I was in the seminary for seven years. Yeah, yep, okay. And that wasn't an easy time for me. I came in one of the older blokes in the seminary. How old are you, Father Josh? I'm 39. I'm good for 39. <laughs> it's the New Zealand water. Okay. Yeah. No. Cold. Uh, yeah, very cold. But uh, in all seriousness, I uh, had some pretty difficult times in the seminary, especially when I realised there was things about myself that I wanted to change. Mm-hmm. And so during those... And what were some of those things, if you don't mind? I came into the seminary with kind of a military mindset. I'd been in some leadership positions in the military and I sort of expected people to listen to what I had to say and that didn't work in the seminary. And because I was one of the older guys and there's all these younger guys, I really loved telling them what to do, but that didn't work. And so I've often been told, like, don't be surprised when people don't listen to you, be surprised when they do. (laughs) Yeah, and so learning how to live in a different way Mm. and really it was the person who God was calling me to be. Learning how to be that person was difficult and... There were a lot of times when you know, I'm studying my degree and my master's and I'm just loaded up with stress from that and I've got relationship challenges with my brother seminarians and exercise is the last thing I feel like doing. Yeah. You know what the antidote to that was? What? Getting up early in the morning. Oh, I know. It's winter at the moment and it was 10 degrees this morning yeah. and I didn't want to get up, but I did because I knew I didn't. <laughs> I knew that I'd feel better later on. Yeah, true. And I yeah. do and I did and I do. It took a lot of perseverance through those seven years in the seminary to come to a point where I was comfortable with who I was, but also trying to maintain that balance in the life with exercising and looking after myself. Yeah. And so... There was a real a balance there between the suffering. You know, there was an element of suffering in that, but persevering to go beyond the suffering because I knew what God had promised for me on the other side of that. And do you think that suffering is just a, a crucial part of being a Christian? I think it's uh, an unavoidable part of being a Christian. Yeah. I think it's something that which we probably try to avoid to our own detriment, but as Christ suffered on the cross yeah. for us, we're called to suffer. Yeah. But suffering brings hope. Yeah. And I think there's, there's St. Paul wrote something about that, didn't he? Yeah. Um, suffering produces um, perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. Yeah. And through those difficult times I had in the seminary when I persevered through that suffering, it created an immense sense of hope. And I guess... You know, exercise is just one way that we can sort of really lean into that suffering. You know, it's a way that we can, I guess, you know, because we are body, soul composites, you know, like our body and our soul intertwine. And so when we experience some sort of suffering in our body, be it from exercise, even though exercise does make us feel better later, um, we can sort of unite that suffering to Christ and be like, Lord, this is me 
make an offering. Hope, I hope you find this worthy, you know, please. <laughs> I know. Can I, can I just share something which I've learned? Yeah, please. One of the keys to getting into exercise is finding something about it that you do like. Okay. Sometimes that's simply listening to music while you endure through the suffering, <laughs> yeah. listening to your favorite tunes. Yes. But you've got to find something that you like. Yeah. So, Father Josh, if you could give us any encouragement on how we can keep our, our bodies in tip-top shape, and not in a superficial way or in a worldly way, but in a, a really wholesome and holy way, mm-hmm. what, would you, what would you give us as an encouragement? The main thing is to move. Our bodies weren't meant for sitting down on the couch eating pizza all the time. Good every now and then. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Finding some sort of movement that you like, that might be just walking to start with, but moving our bodies. You saw the different ways that we're moving our bodies out and outside when we we're exercising with uh, Zach and Matt, but there's lots of different ways to move our bodies. And so finding something you like is the most important part. Also, being prudent about who you're comparing yourself with. Mm. Uh, I try not to compare myself. I try not to compare myself with anyone, yeah. uh, because I've learnt that I only set myself up for disappointment. Yeah, I've heard that comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, absolutely. No matter where you're at right now, no matter where you want to be, plan. Make a plan. Because mm. without a plan, we what's the word? We if you fail to plan, you, you plan, plan to, to fail. fail. Mm. I love all these little axioms yeah, that so have come out today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know. Make a plan, do the plan, actually carry out the plan. At some point or other, you've actually got to make the decision to step outside of the comfort zone. Thanks, Father Josh. There's plenty there for us to take away. Jesus feasted, Jesus fasted, um, Jesus suffered in his body, um, but Jesus wasn't particularly concerned on what he looked like. And our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's definitely something for us to think about a little bit this week. And I encourage you guys to, to maybe think about what that looks like for you. Um, whether that means some exercise with some friends or whether that means maybe, yeah, looking at the different things that you look at. There's plenty there for us to do um, to look after our bodies in a way that glorifies God. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for our final episode of Another Slice of Pizza Season 1. We hope this has been a really useful episode. We hope this has been a really useful show and a whole season for you guys. Um, it's been an incredible partnership between Shalom World and Net Ministries Australia. And we just hope that you guys can stay connected with us on social media, whether it be Facebook and Instagram or whatever. And um, stay connected and stay tuned for season two. Please let us know what you thought of season one. Comment your favorite episode. Um, Let us know who your favorite guests were and we'll see what we can do in season two. See you later. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Shalom World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you're involved, to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.